All right, so all of a sudden, Ronnie2k is replying to people on Twitter, and it seems like, based on what he's saying, and wait, hold up. This is what Ronnie said, bro. Had to get the crew reorganized. We're in a good place now, which frees me up to talk to you guys more again. I don't know what getting the crew organized means or whatever, but it seems like ever since LD left, we haven't really had a community manager or anybody to reach out to. So, yo, this is my shot. 33 things I really disliked about 2K18 that I'm hoping can be improved for 2K19. Yo, by the way, uh, I run a podcast. It's on all the major platforms, Off Top Podcast with my guy Legend of Winning. We talk NBA. If you guys are interested, I'm gonna leave a link at the top of the description. Hope to see you guys there. Also, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. All right, enough plugs. Let's get it. Woo, okay, uh, 33 things. Thing number one. <laughs> it had to be number one. VC. We gotta, you gotta tone it down just a little bit. You don't, I mean, I talked about it enough. Just, we know that's been the main complaint with the game for the last two, three years. Just, just a little bit? Like, we, we can't tone it, a, just, okay, all right. The game is pay to win. It's one thing if you have microtransactions, you buy VC, and it's only cosmetic, but this is not only cosmetic, it affects gameplay. I'm playing Pro-Am. It's gotten to the point where I literally have to buy attribute boosts just to keep up with people, and because you don't make enough VC on Pro-Am, I have to start spending VC to buy attribute boosts. Oh, oh, oh. If you're gonna have microtransactions, just like Rainbow Six, CSGO, Fortnite, please make it specifically cosmetic so it's not impacting the gameplay. My GM is incredibly repetitive. I have had a history with my GM. My goodness, after the first two times, you begin to like, it's not dynamic. You just get really bored of the same thing over and over and over again. And it's like, yo, I'd rather do something else with my time. My league online is lit though. Of course, the fact that there's no private matchmaking in Pro-Am, we expected in 17, we definitely expected it in 18. And based on the fact that the 2K League, even though it's on LAN, has private matchmaking now, I definitely expect it in 2K19. There needs to be a meaningful leveling system. Why is how you go up in overall dependent on how much time you play instead of how good you are. On Rainbow Six, a guy can play quadruple, quint, quintuple. What's, how do you go higher than that? He could play a lot more than me. But if I'm winning my games, and I usually do, all right? I usually do. Then I'll have a higher rep than him. I'll be like a plat two and he'll be a plat three, whatever the case. The rankings should be based on how good you are. That's what a ranking is. You're ranking how good people are and not how much time they've spent on the game, especially my career grinding, which we know doesn't equate to skill. Variable latency in 2K18 drives me crazy. So just for those who don't know, in the middle of the game, the latency's high and then it drops down to low and then it goes to high, then medium. There's no ping number to tell you what the specific milliseconds of delay is from when you click the button on your controller to when the action is actually performed in the game. When it changes like that, I like to use the example. It's like shooting a gun but every single time you shoot it it has a different recoil pattern there's absolutely no way you can master your shot you can probably get good at it but there's no way to master it it reduces the skills gap and it makes the game frustrating to play there were leaderboards a very basic version in 17 and 16 and they even removed that there needs to be a leaderboard system it is so motivating to play a game just knowing that yo i'm at 1000 i need to get to one or even if you're a casual like yeah i'm at 1 million i need to get to at least 100,000. the only logical explanation i could think of for why they would remove leaderboards is to ease pressure on the servers i can't get into technicalities because i don't know what it takes to create a stable server or anything like that but what i do know is i've played games with more stable servers than 2k so of course they have some progress they need to make in that department for sure. The teammate grade system is a joke. The fact that people can get kicked out of a game because of a teammate grade system that never accounts for all the complexities that that this is gonna happen over the course of a basketball game. Bro, I'm so tired of getting called for leaving my assignment when I'm making the right defensive play and rotating. It is so frustrating. And then like you do a couple turnovers by mistake and now you're at a D. And you're, you're, you gotta worry, like, yo, you can't get kicked out the game. And now you gotta start playing like a clown and you're not really playing real basketball. You see where I'm going with this? The teammate grade system either has to go or be improved. I don't even know why it's still in the game for anything outside of my career. The animation glitches, ruined the meta on 2K18. The second sharpshooters and stretch bigs started to hippity hop around, I knew we were gonna see the same cheese that we saw last year, I'm back at it again this year. So next year, please 2K, do not allow any animation glitches because once people get the animations, there is no way to take it back from them. The lag is ridiculous for plenty of reasons. You do not need me to get in. <laughs> okay. 
It's a lot easier to make your shots when your footage is not cutting up 24-7. The dribbling in the game has gotten so simple. It'd be in the past where you could combine a spin move with the hop and then momentum, momentum, and then hop. Like, it was a, there was a lot more to it, to, and it was definitely some cheese involved, right? But I feel like all they really had to do was boost defense and not nerf all of the offensive abilities of some of these point guards that were dribbling. Now what we see in 2K18 is momentum, hop, momentum, hop, momentum, hop. And they just keep doing it over and over again until they force the ankle breaker And then at that point you can't even do anything to defend against it. You just have to catch the L uh, If we're talking about dribbling, we need to talk about blow by animations. Joe, just tone it down Jeez, even if I'm a sharpshooter, just tone it down Just there's no reason someone should just have to click R2 to get by you If you're not in defensive position and you're a sharpshooter makes sense blow by you should get blown but if, first of all, I'm a slasher or like an archetype with more weight, and on top of the fact that I'm in good, I just a little bit, just a little bit. I was playing Fortnite with Davis the other day, and he called 2K18 Snatchback18, and I'm gonna start calling it that too, because that's really all you see when you play, especially against any decent folk. Just snatchbacks and snatchbacks, and then it causes a lot of ankle breakers, it's a really good trigger, and it also guarantees you room to pull up for your shot, and you just keep snatching it back until you see something happen. How was their lag switches on 2K18? My understanding is this, because I used to have a lag switch, lag switches only work on peer-to-peer -peer servers. When I used to play SOCOM, and even when I was playing Modern Warfare 2 and I used my lag switch, I had to be host for my lag switch to work. How is it that 2K does not have peer-to-peer -peer servers, which means if somebody quits the game, it doesn't have to say waiting to transfer host. You know, there's no no there's no peer-to-peer -peer host. I don't understand, and maybe it's just um, my knowledge is limited here. How are people lag switching me on the stage? That they, first of all, those guys need to go, but so does the lag switch. I don't even know how that works, but we need to handle that situation for sure, for sure next year. Yo, it is the worst feeling to get delayed or lag switched when I'm on a 25k court with a lot of VC on the line. On that note, there needs to be a better way to report players. The fact that that guy I played with, I was playing a video on the stage and I got lag switched. I was recording, luckily, and I talked about him in the video. People showed me a screenshot of him two days ago still walking around. That guy has not been banned. There's no active way to report players who are not only cheesing, but literally cheating. They are cheating. They are lag switching to get ahead. Yo, everybody report this guy to PSN, man. Report this guy, bro. Get him out of here. Can't stand people that play like this. The Pro-Am ranking system is a joke. You will get higher on the ranking system by dodging competition. If you try and match up with other teams and have interesting games and really improve, you're gonna get penalized because you will lose games if you're playing against top 25 teams all the time. But if you're in the top 100 and you're just ducking and dodging every single time you're playing against a good team, then you're just gonna skyrocket in the rankings. And then people get the false impression that you're a decent team. In reality, you'd get bought by all the teams in the top 100. Okay, I've talked about this in the past. No need to go in depth on it, but yo, we should be able to talk to the other team. Point blank. We are calling it a playground, but there's no communication between anybody but the two guys on your own team on the park. Come on. That, that's just a feature that's in every game, but that was also in previous games. I don't know why it's been removed, but it has to be back. It, so many phenomenal moments just talking to the other team, whether it was making a friend or making an enemy, is gone. We need patch notes, man. Like, 2K just like really, they just gave up on trying to do any sort of patch notes. They will drop a patch. And they, they, it got to the point where they're like, yo, f it. <laughs> we don't even need the notes no more, man. We're just gonna, oh well, who cares at this point? It's like, nah, we, we still kinda wanna know what we're downloading on our PS4. Like, remember when Rainbow Six dropped a patch on PS4 that just were breaking systems and messing up friends lists? Your PS4 was crashing? Like, I just wanna know what I'm downloading, especially if it impacts the gameplay. The playground is incredibly inconvenient. If you're gonna have a playground, and it seems like based on what Ronnie's been... Bro, my PC can't just turn off while I'm right here. If you're gonna have a playground, you need to make it more convenient. I should be able to choose which spot I spawn on. It shouldn't automatically determine I wanna spawn near the statue. Different things like I shouldn't have to go all the way to my closet, go up an elevator that takes a century to get to my house just to be able to change a hat that I wanna wear. A lot of games understand this. In Assassin's Creed, I don't have to go across the map on a 30 minute journey just to meet somebody. If I've been there before and I went to one of those towers and did the leap of faith, then I could just teleport there because they're trying to increase convenience and they 
they don't want to put you through the hassle of wasting your time on their game. They want you to have fun. So definitely spawn points. Just find ways to make the park more convenient. In the name of convenience, one of the frustrating things that happens a lot is you'll be walking with your squad in the statue area. And then when you get near the playground, sometimes you'll go through like a server barrier and one of your members just disappears. Then you have to wait to invite him to the... To the it, you guys know what I'm talking about because it's happened to you at least once. I don't know what that is, but like... It has to like be fixed for sure next year. <laughs> 2K, if we're gonna nerf jump shots, we're gonna be honest about it and then we're also not gonna do it at all actually. It's not cheating to know a good jump shot. If I spent a lot of time working in the jump shot creator, I just feel like I should be rewarded for something like that. And so to see some of the developers say that it feels like I have a, an edge over the, yes! Cause I worked for the edge. What is the pay to win system we have? Not an edge, but when they're making money off it, I guess it doesn't matter whether it's an edge or not. But it's like, just leave the jump shots alone. The jump shots are fine. The system works great. I mean, honestly, I feel like your shooting should depend more on your timing than your jump shot. But it does give an advantage to the folks that go out of their way to learn these jump shots. And luckily for those people, me, other folks on YouTube drop videos. So it's not even like they don't know what jump shots to use. I'm dropping the videos. So it's, it's, it's really no reason to ever touch a jump shot, ever. Everywhere I look on 2K is ads. Mountain Dew, Ruffles events. Uh, if you go to buy your boost where you're doing the whole pay to win system, there's Ruffles bags just standing there. You can't go nowhere without catching a billboard. Sometimes there's Cutscenes for like I, I get like make money cool and like but just a little bit tone it down like just actually a lot like I, Jesus there's so many ads man there's a lot of ads going on I just want a little less ads in my life there's a reason I don't watch regular TV no more I just watch Netflix I just I just really want to minimize the ads in my life in the name of ads how about those unskippable cutscenes? I'm sure 2K made some sort of deal with like Mountain Dew and then like they can't skip the cutscenes now because they promised Mountain Dew this many impressions. I don't care what the reason is. I just know that I don't want to sit there for five minutes and waste my time with cutscenes that I don't care about. And I think everybody agrees on that. If you want to watch them, good for you. But I don't and I should be able to skip them if that's the case. The My Court camera on 3v3s is absolutely atrocious. It's barely usable. And just expand the My Court a little bit to give space for the camera or try and find a different camera altogether. But I don't see why they don't just expand the My Court just a little bit so the camera isn't hugging the wall so you can actually see what's going on on defense and offense. The playground is bland and a lot of people have been saying this more and more and more as the year goes on. It is so dry. Everywhere you look is just gray, 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 gray. Anytime I got bored of Sunset Beach in 2K17, I would just go to Old Town for the next week and play on the Old Town course. And then I'd get tired of Old Town because that shit was laggy as and then I would go on Rivet City, bro, and I'd chill in Rivet City for a few days before I would... So it was like a rotation. It was a different environment. But this year, it's just everything is so gray. It's so, it's so entirely gray and dry and boring. They need to spice it up a little bit. There's a 1v1 court, but they put it like in the middle of nowhere on the playground. And literally nobody plays on it because not only is it in the middle of nowhere, it's up to three. It is not only the biggest waste of time, but a botched attempt at what could be a phenomenal King of the Hill type 1v1 mode. I just think they need to place it better on the next game. And come on, up to three? That's at least up to five, but like maybe up to 11 would be cool. Maybe just put a timer on them for like five minutes. I don't know. But what I do know is nobody uses it and there's a reason for that. My team is incredibly expensive. I, I didn't even really want to add too much my team stuff in this list because I didn't give it a chance this year. And honestly, I don't want to go deep into my pockets just to pay for packs with absolutely no guarantee that I'm going to get any cards. It just felt like the time I'd invest into it isn't worth what I think I'd be getting out. And so I've just been afraid to try it. I don't want to waste 20 hours on it and find out like, yep, you can't win unless you pay for the best cards. The badge grind improved significantly in 2K18 because they allowed us to grind our badges on the Pro-Am in the park so you could do it online. But still, you should never get to the point in a game where like you're just dreadfully bored of doing the thing that you consider grinding. It's not fun to grind badges. Like 
I feel like it shouldn't take time as much as it should take skill to grind badges. There has to be a way to create a leveling system that's diverse and dynamic and doesn't just require you to sit at the corner three on my career just chucking shots up for like six hours to get a badge. That's not fun. In 2K17, there was a way to change your jump shots between games. So if I felt like something wasn't working, I didn't have to step off and then wait and then ruin my streak. No, I could change it on the spot. But since the introduction of the My Player Lab, which is Dope because now you could create jump shots without going back to your my court like in 2K17, but now you can't change your jump shots without opening up the my player lab, so you can't change them in between games. I feel like on the note of convenience, once again, we should be able to change our jump shots the same way. I should be able to put on like a bracelet or a hat or whatever the case is. This is, I assume, a glitch, but the 96 overalls keep VIPing people off of winning streaks. That is, if I cared about winning streaks and I was like at a 90 or something and I got VIP'd off, I would lose my mind. The fact that that wasn't patched all year, I think is crazy because I really thought it'd be patched by like patch one or patch two. But there should be no way that the winners on the court in the park are kicked off for any reason whatsoever. I don't care if you're a million overall. Like, my career grinders, really? Those are the guys that are able to kick, come on, man. It's not even like they're the best players, they're my career grinders. And they might be cool, they might be straight, but you shouldn't be kicking off the winners, just the losers. One of the most frustrating things about 2K is that you can't try new players without spending $50 on VC and then spending the time to get all of the badges for the players before you could determine if you like the build or not. There's no way to test or try something out. And it's part of the reason why I really enjoyed the combine is I gotta try out so many new builds and it costed me nothing. And so I feel like there should be a way to try, just test, do a trial run on some of these builds that people are interested in. Of course, that would also mean that 2K wouldn't be making a lot of money on botched builds, but I think a lot of people will be happy to know they're not wasting money on a build that they're not gonna have interest in in like two days. So there's two more, <laughs> jeez, this list is long. I was gonna do 50, I couldn't think of 50, so I stopped at 33. Yo, there was a theater system on the 2K League. Now listen, 2K servers, already garbage. So I don't know how smart it would be to now introduce a theater system where they're saving all these videos for people. But I do think there should be a way where like, let's say I had a fantastic game and uh, I wanna save the last 30 seconds or just save the last game. You should be able to sit, click square and then it saves it for you for like seven days or something. At that point, you can use your Xbox, PS4 or if you have an Elgato or a recording software, record it yourself. So I think Black Ops 1 initially popularized the whole theater mode thing, at least for me. Even Fortnite just recently introduced it, which by the way, could explain the recent lag issues ever since it's been introduced. But if it's not gonna lag up the entire servers, just the way it was on the 2K League, just to be able to sift through your gameplay, I think would be dope. Actually, you might not even need to do that because you, at least on the PlayStation, you could just click the share button and save the last uh, 30 minutes, right? Or 15 minutes. And last but not least, uh, there needs to be park matchmaking because it's, it takes too much time to find games on the park, especially if you're not like a 80 or 90 overall player. If you're like a 65, nobody's gonna wanna play with you. And then you're spending 20 minutes to get into a game, you just lose the motivation to play park, right? It's either you have to grind my career until you're good enough so people wanna play with you, or you just ease the tension. That's some sort of matchmaking for people that just wanna hop into games. And you don't even need me to say ranked, unranked. You don't need me to say all that stuff this video, okay? I'm not gonna talk about a skills gap. We all know about that stuff. But these are the things that I didn't like about 2K18. I'm hoping get improved. I assume they tackled at least some of the issues already. I can't imagine nothing on the list has been not re remotely brought up to the developers or if not, tried to be solved. Does that make sense? Listen, man, that's my list, all right? It's 33 things right there. If I missed any, leave them in the comments down below. Yo, if you guys are new again, subscribe to the channel, Off Top Podcast, link in the description. Yo, uh, I got a couple things I gotta handle. So I'm gonna catch you guys later. I'm out. Peace.